Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. Thank you. Hope everybody had a wonderful New Year's celebration and ate whatever you choose to, is your lucky meal so that we have good fortune for 2022. I know in our house it was lasagna as well as uh, pork and sauerkraut. So, you know, I think we're pretty covered there. So it is wonderful to gather with you all here and worship again this morning. Our candles will be lit in just a moment to remind us of Christ's presence among us. We remember that Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there with you. And so today we do come together in person and via video and phone from all corners of our area into one body of Christ. And whenever we do come together as the family and friends of Hayshire, we hope that we find this as a time and a place to rest and to encounter God within our midst. A couple of announcements I have this morning, and then we'll see what's going on with each of you, is um, for those of us in our sanctuary, your bulletins don't have the music that Lainey's going to play, but it is up on our screen, or it should be up on our screen. Yep, it is. So if you know what, want to know what anthems Laney is playing today, you can check out our screen. The bulletins were printed um, before we got Laney's music because Dawn's schedule was compressed so she could spend more time with her daughter while she was here over the holidays. For our folks at home, the bulletins that went out today should have that information in it already. So you are up to speed. A uh, quick reminder that this Tuesday, so two days from now, will be our next Bible study session. We will be meeting in person as well as on Zoom so that Joanne can join us from Florida. And we are looking at, I believe, chapters 10 and 11 of Revelation. The conversation has been very interesting and enlightening so far, so I hope that you come out and join us for more. We are just approaching halfway through the book of Revelation, so there's a lot more to come. Also, our book club will meet next Thursday, not this week, but the following week on the 13th at 6.30. They will be in person at Senior Commons, and they will also be via Zoom. So if you would like to participate in in person but would like to carpool, please contact the church office and we'll help hook you up with the drivers so that we can make sure everybody gets there and enjoys the the time together and the conversation. And our, this is our final week to collect the cold weather items for Mr. Sandy's. So if you still have something that you want to pick up or bring in, you know there's a lot of sales going on, cleaning out of a lot of the winter type stuff, believe it or not. Um, now's a good time to pick them up. You can bring them in, put them in our bin, and then after next Sunday, we will make sure that everything gets delivered down to them so that they can use it since it's supposed to be starting to get really cold next weekend. Other announcements, joys or concerns to share today? A couple I'd like to lift up for our prayers this week is of course everyone in the Boulder County, Colorado area that the wildfire just blew through there um, late last week and they are continuing to do the cleanup and all of that. So we pray for all of the victims and the families that are dealing with that particular crisis. And it wiped out an entire community. Um, I've seen different numbers of houses and buildings destroyed, but one was up in the 900s. So it is a, a big hit for them. Uh, also want to lift up that we hold in prayer Archbishop Desmond Tutu. He passed um, a week ago Sunday, yeah, a week ago, and uh, he was the Archbishop of the Anglican Church in South Africa. Now, most of you should know who Desmond Tutu is. Um, he was one of those truly holy and uh, gentle and loving people in our world. Um, he was caught up in the apartheid with South, South Africa event and with 
the partnership of um, Nelson Mandela. He helped create this Truth and Reconciliation Commission that brought an end to the apartheid and um, helped create an end to their um, discrimination issues there. So he was just a wonderful person. I had the amazing opportunity to actually meet him in 2002. He came to Lancaster Theological Seminary. I happened to be working there at the time. It was before I was there as a student. And I got the opportunity to meet him. And he's one of those people that when you see him, he glows. And his smile is a million watts. So he will be truly missed in our world. Also, everybody's been putting all over Facebook all of their comments and appreciation and expressions of love for Betty White as well. Um, she was another loving and joyful and uh, youthful person. And, you know, and they say even at the age of 99, she died too early. So the old adage of only the good die young, apparently not. Because we've got two that were in their 90s when they left this world and they left it a better place. May their legends live on and help us be better people as well. So my friends, as we enter into this time of worship together, remember that no matter who you are, where you've come from in the week past, or where you're headed in the week to come, for the next 40 minutes or so, you are home. So let us prepare our hearts and souls for worship this morning. Good morning. Will all those who are able please rise and join me in the call to worship? The Magi waited and watched, knowing something wondrous would be happening. We wait for the birth of Jesus. Now something wondrous is about to take root. The darkness that invades all lives has banished by the light of that star. The darkness that surrounds us is gone. Let us celebrate the bright shining of God's love in our lives. 
Let us become those who will bring the light of God's love to others. In the light of Christ, we see the shadows of our world and of our hearts. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Lord of living light, we hear the story of the Magi and tie it together with our warm Christmas celebration. It feels comfortable to us. Break those bonds of comfort and help us to realize the risk of witness and discipleship for those who follow your light. Shine brightly in us and through us. Forgive the blindness so often offered to you. Give us a vision of what you would have us be and do in the light of your love. Amen. Light has come to you, your light has come, and it has erased the darkness. Now we can walk and work in the light, for we are loved by God and called to God's service.
morning. So, Mary, can you please come up here, please? Come up and have your seat. Have your seat. Here's your baby. Okay, hold on to him, hold on to Paul. Like my brother did me when I was that age. <clears throat> okay, now we have some other special visitors. We have a little drummer boy who's leading the way for the wise ones who are coming from the east. So we can have our special visitors come on up. Come on, Michael. Come on, up here, bud. And our wise ones want to come to you, so come on up. They're very shy. I'm not sure why they're shy. Let's see if we can't get them to come in. Come on. Come on. That's right. Okay. So remember we put our gifts there for Mary? And your, your gift is your music. Do you want to play? Mm -hmm. Yep, you play just like that. So if you want to put your gifts down by Mary there, give them to her and the baby. Wow. Boy, that's just like Santa visited at Christmas, huh? Look at that. All right, if everybody wants to have a seat for me. So what happens on today? Who are these wise ones that come to visit? Santa. Santa? No, he already came. He is a wise one. You're absolutely right. But he already came and visited and he's gone. These are some other wise ones. Who are they? Mary. One of them fell down. One of them fell down? Yes, I know. He's laying down. It's okay. He's taking a nap before he makes his appearance. So the wise ones, you often hear them called the Magi, right? And they come from the east. And what do they ride? Camels. Because camels are really hardy and they can go for long distances before they need a break. That's a great camel. Where do they live? In the desert. You are right. They live in the desert. Absolutely. Boy, they live in the smart. desert for a long time. Mm -hmm. It's really hot in the desert. Yep. So I'm going to ask that Desi and Georgia and Ellie and Michael come up here and pick up one of our items. And we're going to add them to our table here because they're coming to see Mary and Joseph and the baby. So can you add them to our Can scene here? Santa. Yep, can you put him up here? All right, this dude, we're gonna turn him around so you can actually see the baby. Oh, and you got our camel too, thank you. You're welcome. All right, so there we've got everybody. And they come and they come to visit. And what do they bring? They bring three gifts, right? Mm -hmm. What are the three? We've got four, so we've got extras for the baby today. Mm -hmm. What did they bring, do you remember? Delilah. Frankincense. Frankincense. That sounds, that's a funny thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's like a perfume of sorts, huh? What else do they bring? A camel. They do bring, they come on camels, you're right, so they bring camels. What else, Georgia? What's the color of your crown? Gold. Gold. They bring gold. Because gold bring, is like money. What else? And they bring some horses. Some horses, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah? What else? It's, there's an animal. Don't cry on a black horse and she eat a, this finger. <gasps> she ate that finger? You still have your finger. Oh my goodness. I'm glad that she didn't eat it. Why not? Ooh. I bet it does. Here. There you go. Have a seat. So, they bring three gifts. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Frankincense or myrrh, they're very funny words, aren't they? Things we don't really know about. They're kind of like perfumes. And they bring gold, they bring money. What does a baby need with gold and money and perfume? What do you think, Ellie? To pay. Money to pay? Okay. Well, it's always good cool because, you know, we need tons of diapers and those definitely cost money. What else? What, what do you think, Georgia? Mm, bottles. Bottles, yep. Yeah. They're going to need to get bottles, too. Eventually. What else? Some, some toys. Some toys are a 
always nice. Yeah, so Fibs. And Fibs, yeah, they used to rule a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else? What other things would we get? Food. Food, yeah. So yep. the money will come in handy to help them out, won't it? So today we would bring gifts very different. You named all sorts of things that we would give if we were having a baby. If somebody that we knew was having a baby. We wouldn't necessarily bring them perfume or gold coins. Babies shouldn't be chewing on gold coins, huh? So our special guests, though, they had a special purpose. They came so that each of us would know that the world knew about God. It wasn't just a small group of people where Jesus was born, but the entire world knew about God. And these people from the world came to visit the baby and to worship him. That is our, what we're here about today. And so we talk about, do we have the courage to go out and look for God in places? What do you think? Do you? Do you like to go on adventures? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Mary yeah. says. Yeah. Yeah? Adventures are fun. Yep, and well, they make you exercise. They do make you exercise. And boy, we could use that, couldn't we? Well, that's what our, our magi, our wise ones, bring to us, is the gift of adventure and looking for God in different places. Okay? Let's have a quick prayer. God, we thank you for the Magi who came to visit little Jesus. We thank you for the gift of adventure and seeking out new things and finding you in some amazing and unexpected places. I thank you for these children that help bring to life the story today before us, the visit of the wise ones and Mary and the now growing baby Jesus. And of course, we can't forget our little drummer boy who brings us the gift of music that our quiet choir so graciously provides us with each week. I ask your blessing upon them and us as we learn and grow together. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, everybody. So can I ask you when you leave to go straight up the aisle so we don't trip over our cords? Okay? I'll take baby Jesus back. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay? All right. I'll see you all later. Thank you for helping. Time to go. Let's go. They don't want to. They love it here. Isn't this awesome? Okay, baby Jesus, you sit there and pay attention. All right. Miss Sally? Please join me for the prayer of illumination. Spirit of God, in the proclamation of your word, reveal to us the hidden mystery of your love in Christ and strengthen our faith that we may approach you with holiness. Amen. The first scripture reading is Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise. Shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you, for the darkness shall cover the earth, and the thick darkness the darkens the people. But the Lord will arise among, upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see, the, see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camel of Midian and Ephraim, all of those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord.
So our gospel lesson this morning comes to us from the gospel of Matthew. So we're changing tracks a little bit. We've been following Luke, and now we're hopping over to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For he, for we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you Bethlehem and the land of Judah are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for you shall bear, for you, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went, they left for their own country by another road. Here ends our readings this morning. Thanks be to God. So today marks the end of our Advent and Christmas holiday and a new beginning for the year ahead. Up until now, we have been following Luke's gospel and his version of the birth of Jesus, the moment that God broke into our human history and changed life as we know it from that moment on. Now we jump to Matthew's gospel where we find a story of some very different visitors to the Holy Family. In our Western faith traditions, we like to weave the nativity stories from both gospels together and tie them up with a pretty bow into one package. So we bring the Magi right into the manger and ta-da, Everything is nice and neat and pretty, and it's over quickly, just in time on Christmas Day to be able to put the manger scene away. But we know that life is rarely that easy or tidy. Visitors seldom come and go as we have planned, especially over the holidays and around the birth of a new baby. We often stretch out the visits and the festivities, and the same happened when Jesus was born. Not everyone came to see the new baby when the first few days or even that first week. Some folks didn't come and visit or greet the new baby until much later. So when we read what little information is provided in Matthew's scripture, we start pulling some pieces and putting them together to try and come up with a time frame. So it starts with King Herod asking these foreign visitors the exact date that the star appeared. And then later on, we find out that he sends out his army to kill all children ages birth to two years. And we come to the logical conclusion that it most likely was almost two years after Jesus's birth before the Magi arrived in Jerusalem and then finally in Bethlehem. So no manger. So it's no surprise that for the Western world churches, us, Our liturgical calendar puts off the Magi's visit until January 6th, which has become known as the actual feast day of Epiphany, when we celebrate the Magi or the wise one's arrival in Bethlehem to visit the Holy Family and to pay homage to Jesus. And since our denomination rarely holds services other than on Sundays, we celebrate Epiphany on a Sunday close to January 6th 
And today is that day for us. As we think about the Magi's visit with Jesus, some questions seem to quickly rise to the surface, or at least they do for me. Such as, how did the Magi know that Jesus was born? How did they know to look for that particular star? And how did they know where to find him? According to Brent Landau and his familiarity and translation of a little known manuscript from Syria about the life of the Magi, he states that the Magi were descendants of Seth, the third son of Adam and Eve. Seth was believed by many early Jews and Christians to be extremely pious and virtuous. So it's very fitting for the manuscript in his book entitled Revelation of the Magi to trace the ancestry of the Magi back to such an illustrious founder. Landau tells us that the, the Magi inherited a prophecy of supreme importance for the world. It read, a star of indescribable brightness will someday appear, heralding the birth of God in human form. The manuscript states that Seth himself had learned about the prophecy from his father, Adam, since the star originally had hovered over the tree of life, illumining before all of Eden before Adam's sin caused the star to vanish. So for thousands of years, the Magi have passed down this prophecy from generation to generation. And based on this prophecy, they had been watching and waiting for the birth of that star, Landau tells us. And after many generations of faithfully watching and waiting, suddenly that foretold star appears in the heavens. And as promised, the star is indescribably bright, so bright that the sun becomes as faint as the daytime moon. I mean, can you imagine that? But there is a catch, Landau tells us. Because the Magi alone are worthy of guarding this prophecy, the star can be seen only by them. You and I wouldn't be able to see it. Hmm. That's exactly what I said. Hmm. It's an interesting piece of information. The Magi alone can see the star. Definitely different than what we have been led to believe and how we portray the story every year. I'm not sure it really matters though, whether or not the Magi were the only ones that could see it or whether the star was visible to all of humanity. I don't know that that matters. What is important to the story is that the Magi faithfully fulfilled their part of the prophecy by following the star in search of Jesus, the newborn king of the Jews and God's self born into human flesh as they had been instructed by Seth and their own traditions. And they did that so that they could worship this child. Landau shares that the star leads the Magi into Jerusalem where the city's inhabitants puzzle at the exotic foreigners. And I imagine that everyone wondered, who are these people and what are they doing here? Landau reminds us that because the star is invisible to everyone else, they presume these visitors to be astrologers because they kept looking up at the sky. They might, this might be how we have come to believe that the Magi are astrologers. From here, Landau says, the story of the Magi, the manuscript, somewhat parallels the story of Matthew. When the Magi hear the Jewish prophecy about the birth of the Messiah in Bethlehem, the star reappears to them and leads them right into the environs of the village of Bethlehem, right to Jesus's front door. Matthew picks up the story from there and tells us that there they see Mary and baby Jesus, and they laid before him three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. To our present day minds, we feel that these are odd gifts to bring to a new mother and for a young child. However, they're probably the types of gifts presented for formal occasions and 
for royal or at least high stature bursts in ancient days. It seems that everyone has been intrigued by these gifts as if they hold the secret to understanding this story. Over the years, many scholars have stated that the gifts are symbolic to Jesus's identity and role as Messiah, that they foreshadow his life and death to come. And some have even said that they were given to help the young family afford the unexpected trip to Egypt as they fled Bethlehem to save the child from certain death by Herod's army. While the physical gifts are identified, making them appear important to the story, I believe that they are not the most important gift that the Magi brought and continues to bring to us today. The Magi's gift of their faith and trust in God is the important one. Stephen Bowman tells us that from Matthew's point of view, the Magi were authentic spiritual seekers. Based on the appearance of a new star, they faithfully answered the instructions of their faith tradition to go, to follow the star where it would lead them, and to find God born into human flesh, and then honor and worship him. Having trusted in God's word to them, having passed down their faith and mission to diligently watch and wait, no matter how long it took, God finally rewarded their faithfulness and they discovered a remarkable truth that transcended their immediate context and led them into alien territory. And in a surprising location far from home, they found what they had been searching for in the birth of a child to a young peasant woman. Bowman states, so in that small town, in a foreign land, in a humble home, to a young family, they came face to face with God and they were blessed for their visit. William Danaher Jr. tells us, or he actually agrees with Bozeman's statement that the Magi's determination to follow the lead of this heavenly light expressed a willingness to be led by the splendor of grace to the knowledge of truth. And in this way, they adore the word in flesh wisdom in infancy, strength in weakness, and the Lord of majesty in the reality of man. For us today, the gift the Magi brings to us is not something physical, like the gifts that they gave to Jesus, but it is the gift that we too are all called to be spiritual seekers. And as spiritual seekers, if we have the patience and the determination to follow Christ's heavenly light, seeking the truth that can only be revealed by Jesus, the word made flesh, God with us, will we be rewarded. Our yearning search will be fruitful. Our spiritual treasure chest will be filled to overflowing and our lives will roll out before us with amazing opportunities to experience life with new eyes, new ears and new hearts and to become part of God's transformational ministry modeled by Jesus himself. On this epiphany, may we open ourselves to receive the gift that the Magi brings us, hearts made ready for the revelation of God with us in new and amazing ways, and may we be changed forever. Amen.
you will all pull out your communion insert and open your communion feast supplies. We will share together in this meal and this liturgy. Friends, here at this table and in the sanctuary, let the divine spark enter our lives. Let the holy light aid us in seeing Christ in our midst. The brightness of Jesus Christ will illuminate our way. The radiance of Christ will warm our hearts. God is shining upon you and God's light streams upon you. Open your hearts. We open them to the brilliance of God. Let us give thanks for the light and love of God. We praise you, our Creator, with joy and thanksgiving. We enter this stunning space eager to experience the presence of Christ. Notice Christ in the cries of the children. Spot Christ in the neighbors singing. Recognize Christ in the laughter from the back of the sanctuary. And Christ is gleaming here, summoning us to share love and light as we greet our neighbors, share peace, pass the bread and cup, and love kindness across this earth. On the night before Jesus died, when some were plotting to extinguish the holy light, Warmth was shared between friends. Jesus took bread, and in his blessing, he passed the divine glow to his followers. As he broke the bread, he reminded them to eat in remembrance of him. Later that same evening, Jesus took up the cup. He blessed it and invited his friends to taste from the cup of grace. And he said, do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Holy Spirit, may your divine glow bless this bread and cup that we all have and share. Warm our hearts made cold by a chilled world. May this meal inspire us and prepare us to carry your warmth into our world. Amen. Friends, you may eat and drink at this time. Let us join our voices together and give thanks. God of light and love, we cherish this table in this season when the nights are long and cold. Through this meal in Christ's presence and with our neighbors, our hearts have warmed. May the comfort in our souls sustain us through winter and nudge us to create welcoming spaces for our neighbors. With gratitude, we leave here energized to kindle your love in this world. Amen. For with gratitude and joy, let us render tribute tributes and bring gifts for we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in Christ.
glorious God, you led the wise ones to seek Jesus, your holy child, born of Mary. Overjoyed in the presence of his radiant light, they knelt down before the child and offered him precious gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We too offer our gifts in gratitude, reverence, and thanksgiving for the birth of your child, who you called to lead the world into fullness of life. Receive and bless this offering as a joyful sign of the boundless love and abundant life we are called to share in Christ. Amen. It is about that time again. As we prepare to leave, know that the light of the star, the light of God's love shines before you as you leave this place. So go in peace, go in joy, go in love to meet God's people in the world and greet them with the good news of salvation. Amen. Please be seated. Well, it is that time once again for us to go back out into the world. And as we go, we take with us the gifts that God gives us. We also take with us the gift of the Magi, open hearts, sense of adventure, and a searching for God always. So as you go, know that you go with the ultimate gift that God can give us, and that is the gift of peace. So my friends, we remember that every time Jesus came into the presence, but especially every time he left, those nearest and dearest. He gave them the ultimate gift of God's peace. So may the peace of Christ be with each of you. Go in peace, have a blessed week, and we'll see you soon. For those of you that may be able to stay just a little bit, we are doing our taking down of our beautiful decorations and returning back to our normal sanctuary and its beauty and simplicity. So if you can help many hands make light and quick work, we would appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a blessed day. Oh, and Sally has her camera. So we're remember, we're updating pictures for our directory that we are redoing. So if we are going to be getting new pictures for you, please see Sally out here in the gathering place. Thank you.